Hey everyone, this is Mike and welcome to my beginner's guide to gathering. Now in this video, we're more specifically going to be talking about Miner and Botanist. Fisher is a tiny bit different from these two gatherers as well. Um, but I'm not really going to be talking about that one because then this video would become way too long. And I want to try to keep it short and concise so that you can get kind of an idea of what you can expect when you want to start gathering. Now gathering, of course, is very important if you also want to craft because when you want to craft items, you of course need ingredients and those ingredients will more often than not come from gathering stuff. So today we're going to be taking a look at the different stats that are available to you as a gatherer and what you are kind of interested in getting, how you can gather different items, both normal items as well as collectibles, and then also quickly talk about the difference in between all of the nodes, normal modes, time nodes, and then what the difference is between the three different time nodes as well, as well as show you a quick collectible rotation as well in case you want to use collectibles in order to level up or in order to get some gear as well because you can use the, uh, the currency that comes from collectibles in order to buy yourself some end game gear as well once you do reach level 80 or even level 70 uh, if you want to take a quick stop right there so first of all let's take a look at our stats we have three stats available to us we have gathering perception and gp uh, just like with any other class gp in this case is our mana so to speak so this will be used to basically spend on our different abilities our gathering will boost the percentage chance that we have of obtaining an item so the item rate like the chance of you obtaining an item is not 100 percent standard um, but when you have higher gathering you can basically boost this chance higher and higher perception will allow you to gather items as a high quality item this rate starts at 15 percent which i'll show you in just a bit um, but you can boost this by using certain skills and the higher your perception is the stronger those skills are going to be and perception is also really important when it comes down to getting a higher collectability rating when you are doing collectibles so let's open up a gathering note to kind of see what it looks like so this is a normal gathering note as we can see because my gathering rating is high enough we get a hundred percent chance to gather all of these things and then because my perception is high enough we also are able to get them as high quality items there's this 15 percent chance now we can use things to increase this like for example leaf turn three in this case on my botanist and then this will boost the high quality rate depending on how much perception i have so as you can see 53 57 57 that is because these are different level of items as you can see level 78 79 so it is going to have a higher increase on lower level items compared to the high level ones and then of course the more perception i have the higher this rate will be as well then to collect an item it's very simple you just click on it you get the smash and there we go we just collected the item of course if this is not a hundred percent we can use other things like for example feast field mastery one two and three uh, to boost this rate as close to 100% as possible because you do want to try and get it as close to 100% as possible because otherwise it is possible that when you try to gather it you get nothing instead. Now when it comes down to gathering notes these normally are scattered around in groups of three so I'm going to zoom out real quick as you can see we had two gathering notes right there we'll have another two somewhere over there and then I think another two like over here or something like that will fly over real quick so as you can see on your compass, we have two more nodes down here. Oh, and it's actually a little bit further up. We have two more over there. And the reason why it is like that is because once you've gathered from a node, I'll pluck one clean again. Oh, let me enable quick gathering, because with quick gathering you just click it once and then the AI just does it on itself. Once you have gathered a node completely clean, it will disappear. And then as you can see, there you go, it disappeared off my minimap as well, and it's gone now. So you basically have to just open more nodes, gather from more nodes, and these will all respawn. So that's what normal gathering kind of looks like. Now, you can use different skills, as I said, like, for example, leaf turn to increase the high quality rich chance that you get. You can use stuff like blessed harvest 1 and 2, pick clean, bountiful harvest to increase the amount of items that you get per gathering attempt. Uh, and then you can also like use field mastery to increase the rate at which you can acquire these items. Of course, if you're already at 100%, you don't need to use field mastery, but say you're at 95% or something, then it is worth getting that extra 5% just in case that you don't miss any of them. Now, when it comes down to the other nodes as well, because this is a normal gathering item, this will be available at all times of the day, but there are also things called time nodes. So if I open up my gathering log real quick, you can check all of the items here, all of the different things that you can gather. So for example, if you need something specific, let's say 
birch lock or something like that. You type in birch and then you can see birch lock here, you click here and it'll show you on the map where you kind of need to go. Now there are also nodes that are timed. So for example, let's say the sandalwood log can be found in Raktika. So if I click on it, this will be spawning over here somewhere. But if you hover over this, you can see it is a legendary node, time of appearance 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. and 2, a, uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So that means that this node will only be available twice a day. Now this is in Eorzean time. A full Eorzean day, full 24 hours, takes one hour, meaning that every half an hour you will be able to go and gather this item. Knowing this is very important if you want to make a gathering trip, as we like to call it, um, because basically for every five minutes you'll be able to go and gather a new item, and these five minutes will also be enough for you to regenerate all of your GP, because unlike with crafting, GP regenerate, uh, regenerates over time. So if I go in here, and for example I activate something that costs me a bit of GP, and I go and gather this item, you can now see that my GP is slowly regenerating, as I am gathering items, and then of course if I'm not gathering, it is going to slowly be regenerating as well. We can use something like a cordial or a high cordial in order to just immediately give us a bunch of GP back, uh, but these things as you can see, 3 minutes, 3.5 minutes cooldown, you won't be able to spam these things. So when it comes down to getting a gathering trip going, you're usually going to go from one node to the next in a span of 5 minutes, because those 5 minutes will be enough for you to get all of your GP back. So that is that. Now what is the difference between all of these timed nodes? Because there's three different types of timed nodes. We have unspoiled nodes, ephemeral nodes, and legendary nodes. Now the unspoiled nodes are usually used for collectibles. So if I open up my timer here real quick, and I go to my collectible exchange, you can see that all of these different items can be gathered as a collectible, and if I trade them in, they will give me white scripts or they will give me yellow scripts. And these are a currency that you can basically use to get yourself some end game gear. So if you're just getting into crafting and gathering, uh, script gear is something that you can use to basically give yourselves a decent amount of stats at end game. Now, usually these things over here, the ones that give you yellow scripts, will come from unspoiled nodes. The ones that give you white scripts will usually come from legendary nodes. More often than not, legendary nodes are also used for crafting ingredients. If I open up my crafter log real quick, let me get rid of that. So for example, these things, the Maribor log, this comes from a legendary node. If I go to gathering, you can see legendary node spawns over here somewhere on this little island in Ilmeg, available between 8 and 10 a.m. and 8 and 10 p.m. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much kind of like how those two things work. If you go to that node, you go gather from it, uh, it will disappear, and you also won't be able to gather from it again until that half an hour spawn window is available again. When it comes down to an ephemeral node though, these are usually used to get Aether Sand, so for example things like this through Ethereal Reduction, which I'll show you in a bit as well, and these will be able to be respawned. So we'll go and get a legendary node first to kind of show you what it looks like, so it's almost 4pm, so I'm going to see which one spawns at 4. So as you can see, the Dusk Blooms over here, legendary node will spawn somewhere over here, so we're going to be flying over there and then I'll kind of show you how it kind of works. So, we are kind of flying to the destination, as you can see it should be over here somewhere. So I'm just gonna hang around until it is 4pm, and then it will show me on the compass as well uh, where the node is basically going to be spawning, seeing how there's people waiting down there. It's a high chance it will be over here. Um, this will never show on your map as well, by the way. Gathering points never appear on the map, but they do appear on your compass. And if there's, for example, a legendary node spawning or something like that, there will also be like a shining indicator if you're far away from it. As you can see, legendary vegetation patch has spawned. And I'll get a little uh, like pop-up over here as well, like level 80 legendary lush vegetation patch has been spotted. So you open this up, for example, I'll just use some of my skills to increase the items that I get. I gather all of the items. And then once I've gathered all of these items, the node is going to disappear and then it will respawn in half an hour from now. There we go, gathered, node is gone, and now it won't be spawning for another half an hour. And now we are over here to take a look at an ephemeral node. So when it comes down to the unspoiled and legendary nodes, they are available once every half an hour for five minutes. You gather from them once and then they despawn until they respawn again half an hour later. When it comes down to ephemeral nodes, these are usually available once every hour, but they stay up for 10 minutes. And the cool thing is that these will also respawn during this 10 minute window. So if I go over here 
and let's say for example I gather from the fire clusters or something like that these are collectible that we're after um, let's say I gather the fire clusters bam the node disappears but what I can now do is I can respawn this by opening up three other nodes so I'm gonna go over here I'm just gonna open this and close you don't need to actually gather from it open a second one and then open a third one and then after we open the third one you'll see that the node will have respawned oh, I'm too far away so open close and as you can see on the map the, le the ephemeral node has respawned now an important thing to note about the ephemeral nodes as well is that these do not have an indication on the map so if there was a legendary node spawning you'll see like a little arrow pointing towards it of like there is the legendary node with these ephemeral nodes it will, it will show on the map, but it won't show you an arrow as to where you need to go. So you kind of need to know the locations of these things. So I'm going to be popping a Coriol, so I have my full GP again. I'm going to be putting on my collector's glove. But if you want to gather a collectible, that's very important. And let's show you how a normal collectible rotation looks like. Now, I have 800 GP, which is quite a lot. Uh, you most likely won't have this, especially not when you just get into, uh, in, into gathering at like level 70 or something like that. So a normal collectible rotation looks like this. We start with Discerning Eye to boost our next action. We use Impulsive Appraisal because this has a chance to give us Discerning Eye again. And it gave us Discerning Eye. Now if we didn't get this buff, we would have to apply it again. But as you can see, it's grayed out, so we can't use it. So what we do instead is we use Single Mind. This will give us an extra gathering attempt. And we use Impulsive Appraisal again. And we got lucky. Again, Discerning Eye proc, so another Single Mind. And to finish it off, we now use Methodical Appraisal, because as you can see, we're going to reach 30 out over here. So we normally have about three actions per uh, like collectible attempt, basically, which is Discerning Eye, Impulsive, and then if we do not proc Discerning Eye, we just do it again, Impulsive. If we proc it, we use Single Mind, and then we use Methodical to finish it off, and then we click Collect to basically collect our collectibles. You have to do this item per item, though. A little bit tedious, but it's not too bad. And there we go. All of our collectibles are gathered. Now, if you were doing collectibles for, for example, Rowena, you can go in here. You can check your stuff. Uh, for example, this one is not in the list. Uh, but if it was, you can just go up to the vendor and trade in your collectibles for those scripts. In this case, these collectibles weren't for scripts, but in other, uh, these were for the Aether Sands. What I can do is I can do Ethereal Reduction. And then I can turn my collectibles into Aether Sands, as you can see right here as well as some crystals. So that's kind of like what a collectible rotation looks like. Of course, there are a few different rotations. Some are more towards like getting extra items. Others are to getting um, a higher collectability rating or something like that. So there's a few different ones out there, but this is kind of the basic one. Start with discerning eye, impulsive appraisal. If it procs, you use single mind. If it doesn't proc, you use discerning eye again. Impulsive appraisal again. If it procs, single mind. If it doesn't, discerning eye. Then use methodical and then start gathering the items that you are looking for. So that's kind of gatherer in a nutshell. You have your normal nodes that are always around that you can just gather from. You can use these different items to get bonus items as you're gathering, a higher HQ rating, uh, boost the gathering rate that you have so you can get as close to that 100% as possible. You have the unspoiled and legendary nodes to go gather items from for crafting or to get collectibles for, for example, trading into Rowena and to get those scripts. And then, of course, you also have your ephemeral nodes that are only available once every hour, but they stay around. If you just open a couple of other nodes that are lying around, it will respawn in that 10-minute window. And you can gather those items to go get collectibles and then turn those collectibles into Aether Sands using Ethereal Reduction. So that's kind of like a crash course on Gatherer. It's relatively simple. Uh, it's mainly annoying to kind of keep track of all of the timers, of course. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention with all of these timers, uh, if you click on these things, right click, set timer, you can basically make a little alarm that goes off whenever the thing is about to spawn. You can give yourself like a reminder three minutes before it spawns or something like that. Um, so you can kind of see those things. There are also websites that keep track of these things, like for example, Garland Bell is the one that I use the most. It's a really good website. I'll link it down in the description if I do not forget about it. Um, it's really useful to basically keep track of all of the collectibles, where they spawn, when they spawn, uh, those kind of things. So 
That's pretty much Crash Course and Gathered. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. If you would like to see an extra guide on, for example, fishing, because fishing is a little bit different, let me know as well and I'll definitely get to that at some point. But that's all I have to say for today's video. So I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for supporting me. And I'll see you in the next one.